They step into the biggest shows with the biggest names. And sometimes they get written on or off in a moment's notice. It's time to find out all the dramatic details of what it's like to be a guest star. With your host, Pete Ferrero. Let's go. Okay, um, this is really exciting. Um, I am doing my first guest star. And, you know, um, we'll talk about that in a second. But um, I have my TV crush joining me here. <laughs> Kathleen Robertson. You look absolutely beautiful today. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I feel um I feel strange doing this on Thanksgiving. You're very kind to do this on Thanksgiving. Anything for you, Kathleen. <laughs> Thanksgiving, yeah. Christmas, I'm always a Claire. I don't know. I don't know if you're aware of all that, but uh so I'm I'm just super excited to have you here and to talk about this. Um, but I should say, you know, we talked about guest star stuff for a while on, uh, yeah. we've talked about that. At, at, we've talked about that on the podcast, on another podcast that we did and all this stuff. Um, and you have some interesting thoughts about just generally speaking on the role of being a guest star, right? You've yeah. seen, you've seen this. So tell me a little bit about that. And then we'll get into specifics about what you've done. Um, I'm also really digging, uh, but for the people that are not, that are just driving and not live watching this, she has this beautiful red lipstick. She looks incredible. I'm just trying to, to, to describe the scene here. It's, you're it's making me, you're, you're embarrassing me. It's like, it's like um, a levels unknown of, of Kathleen beauty right now. So well, you're very, you're very sweet. Um, uh, okay. So yeah, I think I think, you know, initially we had talked about the guest star experience and um, it's kind of a fascinating one. I think it's really kind of, um, you know, it sort of feels similar to being invited to, you know, the cool kids party, but you're not really part of the club. You're just kind of allowed to go and and sort of be a part of it, but um, it's very daunting. It's very, um, it's very intimidating, especially if it's a hit show. I mean, you know, funny for me, like Not A 210 was initially a guest star kind of role. And it's it's an incredibly nerve wracking experience to, to, to go into. Um, and I always sort of, now that I have gone on to be a series regular on shows, like I've always been super sensitive to it and always made a point of making sure that I'm the series regular or, you know, the number one, the number two on the call sheet. That's like really welcoming to the guest stars, really inclusive, really sort of like helping to ease their nerves and really helping to sort of just cut through all that bullshit on day one and just be like, I know this is really hard and let's just kind of be actors and focus on what we're doing here and not kind of get caught up in like the environment, you know? And it's, it's also like a really weird thing because I had many experiences when I was a young actor, like starting out where I would go on to shows and, you know, you're going into a successful series where people are making a ton of money. They're super jaded. They're super burnt they're just like, oh my God, what are we even filming today? Like that's right. always the biggest thing where it's like you go on and you've memorized all of your stuff because you're so excited to be there. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge opportunity for you as a guest star. But to David Caruso, to Patricia Arquette, to whoever, it's like, they're like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. I've been doing this for like six years, 16 mm. hour days. And so like, I don't even know what scene we're shooting today. Not, not to say that those actors in particular were like that, but you know, it is definitely a bit of that environment where, you know, you're kind of showing up bright and shiny and fresh and everyone else is kind of just like exhausted trying to kind of get, get the day. And I'm sure for being a young actor is even more interesting too, because when you're a young actor, you come in sort of with all of this energy of like, I'm going to be on set with Patricia Arquette today. And I'm, I'm not specifically saying her, but, and then you get there and 
I think that's why some people have this experience of like, well, it wasn't that great because, you know, Patricia Arquette didn't do this or what, or, and, or Luke Perry right. didn't do this, but it's not because of that. It's because of what you just said, sort of, right? For sure. For sure. And it is also like, I mean, I know like, when I did, uh, I did a show on TNT for three years called Murder in the First, and it was Tay Diggs and I, and we, you know, it was really like our show. It was like, we did all the heavy lifting. We had all the big, you know, like every script was just like pages and pages and pages and pages of dialogue and memorization and, you know, actress, and we had a ton of guest stars. And so I feel like that show in particular for me was kind of like, you know, you have to make sure that you're like, oh, this person's coming in and they've auditioned for this and this mm -hmm. is a big deal for them. And they only have two lines or they only have three lines, but this is a big deal for them. Yeah. And so there's like, I always just felt because I had done there, I had done that and I had started out in that world that I was just always, and I still am like, I'm super sensitive to it, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm just very much like, you're doing great. And like, do you want to run lines? And, you know, people are so appreciative of like, oh, thank you so much. Because there are the nightmare stories where man, you don't get that and you show up and you're literally treated like a piece of furniture. And do you remember the 90210 storyline? Just real quick. I, I'm going somewhere with this. I promise. Do you remember the 90210 storyline? You were there when uh, Jenny Garth has a stalker and she's uh, this girl. Uh, well, her the character's name was Tara. Her name is Paige Moss, but she said yeah, that she, yeah. came, she came to uh, she came to set and she had a scene with Brian and she was like, um, hey, you know, I'm feeling like I really want to because they were going to the bowling alley or something that a big scene. Sorry, 90210 fans will get this. But uh, she said to Brian, she's like, I just really want to kind of run the lines from the bowling alley. <laughs> and Brian was like, I got it, Paige. We don't we don't need to run lines. <laughs> Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know that story, but that yeah. does I mean, yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me let, I just I always <laughs> find that really funny because Paige Moss was just like so excited. She's gonna try to have this little moment with, you know, Brian, you know. Yeah. And then of course it doesn't, you know, he's just been doing this for so long. And he's told me yeah. that many times. All right. I want to talk about earlier, early on, you did this show called Maniac Mansion in in, in Canada, and that sort of like walks you in. I know you've talked about that a whole bunch before but what was that really like for you to be that age and working on a set I mean I just interviewed someone uh that was a kid actor and they have such a unique that's a whole other podcast I want you to jump on that one but that's a whole other experience in itself but yeah. what was that world like at that time um well it was my first series regular role I was very young I was like 16 um I did it all through high school so I was tutored um, and it was, uh, it was definitely a really cool show to work on because it was all sketch stuff and it was all, um, I don't know if you know SCTV. I do. Uh, yeah. So it was all the SCTV guys. So it was like Eugene Levy and, you know, um, Martin Short was on it. And oh, I love them. Yeah. Clarity. And, you know, it was all, you know, those amazing geniuses. And so, um, yeah, I played the daughter and I was essentially, uh, every week was kind of a new, we would do, it was sort of a family show, but then we would jump into these weird parodies. So they would, they would kind of give me like a tape of like Juliet Lewis and Cape Fear and be like, okay, you're going to do this this week, or you're going to do Silence of the Lambs. And so we worked with like, you know, prosthetics and wigs and altering the body. And it was an incredible um, training ground for me uh, as an actor. I, I think we did like 60 or 70 episodes, which is a lot. Um, and that was kind of like my, that was like the show I was on all through my teenage years, like 16, 17, 18. And then, um, so it was, it was really, interesting and well, cool. you, but you're in school at that time right you were in school when you were doing that I was but I was acting now so I had a tutor so I was I kind you. of I was kind of like in a school but was mainly working so I would kind of show up to school every once in a while and get you know severely bullied for being an actor and thinking that I'm cool and special when I'm not I wouldn't have done that. I would have, I would have been totally opposite and want to talk to you about everything. And plus, because you're so uh, you're so beautiful, I would have to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, I definitely was bullied a lot for being an actor and being a Canadian actor as well. You know, I think I mean, in, that's the best. I think in LA, I mean, like it would be different because there'd be lots of kids who are in the entertainment industry, but where I'm from, you know, I was a very rare bird. Like it was like, what? You're on TV? Like, what the hell? That would have been so fascinating to me. It would have been all in. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got bullied a lot. I don't like that. I don't like to hear that. Should we go and, should I go and find these people? Well, there was <laughs> one girl in particular. Mm. Okay, well, let me know and I'll go, I'll her track her. Carrie Walsh. Oh, okay well that's odd because then eventually there's a the walsh family which is yeah. <laughs> which is a constant reminder of this person only you would like tie it back to nana i mean it's all it's all one big tie into nana I, I imagine um all right but then you do this mo you do this tv movie with Corey Haim and Corey feldman oh right my God. Oh blown my God. away but those guys are so huge they're they're teen th heartthrobs at that time it was crazy <laughs> well and and they it was seem, it was crazy they seem to be like the kevin bacon every young actor has some sort of experience with these two guys what was yeah. that like it was <laughs> <laughs> it was actually um it was actually really really insane and i was i was um I was recently just telling a girlfriend of mine about the experience. So it wasn't a TV movie. It was a, it was a movie movie. It was a okay. feature. Blown away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And, um, well, I, then you should talk to IMDb because IMDb lists it as a TV movie. I'm so sorry. Okay. okay. And I've okay. seen will, this, but I've seen this and I loved it. Uh, I loved you in it. So. Oh my God. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. I mean, it was crazy. We shot it in Toronto. I was on my, I was doing Maniac Mansion at the time. So it was kind of my hiatus movie. So when we broke for hiatus, I went and did this movie and, um, I mean, Corey and Corey and Nicole Egger, <laughs> they were like, massive at the time huge and, stars and they were like and I was kind of the like local hire Toronto actress that like you know was just kind of trying to act like oh yeah I'm not like freaking out this is fine <laughs> and we would kind of go um I told I was telling my friend about like the other day it was so I my vivid memory is like the two Corys and Nicole and I one day they invited me to go shopping with them in Toronto in Yorkville and I was like okay you know and I'm living like with my parents at this point and like you know mm. Hamilton like driving like a geoprism shitty old car and I was like okay and we went shopping in Yorkville and they spent so much money I was like I was just like trying to act chill and cool and they were buying like Issey Miyake and Dries Van Noten and Dolce and like I mean they were just dropping money buying like insane stuff and it was just such a weird and they're like real moment for me and people were losing their shit um now do you have any experiences with those guys hitting on you or any of that stuff well, Corey Feldman, who I like really liked and I really connected with him and I, you know, I, I just kind of thought he was really super sweet and, and I really liked him. He did say to me and I'm like literally outing him and he would be like, fuck, why would you say that? But he He's did, fine. I, I do have a very vivid memory of sitting in the back of like his limo and he said to me, I'm gonna, you know, you should move to LA with me. Like I'm gonna take you to LA and like basically like you can move into my house with me. And I just remember being like, oh my God. No. Kathleen, you should move to LA with me. <laughs> yeah. 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 He was, he was, he was, yeah. And he was in full like Michael Jackson garb. Oh, well, that was the whole thing. But you've I mean, listen, yeah. I I just I just talked to someone else who knows that knows them too. And you've heard you've seen their trajectory and their story now. And he's come out yeah. and said some stuff. How do you feel about that when you hear some of that stuff that that he's been talking about? You know, you with about my, you Michael, about my... Michael Jackson and then the, about the, you know, how they were treated as young teenage actors and this, he's been outing people himself about, you know, guys that hit on the, the Corys and all this. I don't even know if you're aware of all this. Yeah, no, I'm aware of it. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's super, it's super hard to watch and it's super disturbing and troubling for sure, especially as somebody who grew up loving Michael, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, it's tough. Sad. I still listen right to a now. Michael Jackson song. I think one thing we're struggling with as a as a as a this generation anyways, separating the art from the artist, right? Yeah, for sure. 
Um, I want to talk about now, obviously, the way I mean, I found I saw you in Blown Away, but then obviously you come to 90210 and this is a game changer for you, right? I mean, Shannon was still there. Um, you called yeah. Claire calls her torment it. I don't know if you recall this, <laughs> but um, and you come onto this huge set. I mean, look, it's the Peach Pit. It's the Walsh House. It's the, these kids are superstars. And you did have this experience a little bit with the Corys, but this is a whole other level. What is yeah. it like walking into that set? Um, well, it was really, uh, it was really insane. And it was really kind of, um, you know, it, it, I was of course aware of how massive it was. And I was of course, you know, um, fully, I fully knew kind of what I was stepping into. But I guess I just didn't really realize that, you know, here we are, however many years later, and people still are fascinated with it. People mm -hmm. still want to know about it. You know, it's it's one of those, um, it's one of those rare things that as an actor, I mean, I've worked on a million different things, um, but it's still one of those projects that people still want to know about you know, and, and there's a lot of actors. It's funny. I've talked to a lot of friends of mine who are successful actors and they always say, oh, it's so weird because like, I never had that thing like that. You know, I've mm -hmm. worked, I have a ton of credits, but there are those certain jobs, you know, that just are those jobs. Like, I mean, it's like Tom Hanks joking about like people still asking him about bosom buddies. It's sure. Like, there's always going to be people who are like, I want to, I want to know about Nana 210. And it's just, and I think I've, I've, you know, we've talked about this before on your other podcast, which is that like, I, I think for me, like I went through such a period of really wanting to sort of distance myself from it and be like, no, 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 no. I'm more than that. I'm not that. And now, you know, that I've um, kind of, given it deeper thought and also, you know, grown and matured and worked on, you know, things as a writer and a producer and a showrunner and done a lot of other things. Like I now am able to be like, oh yeah, I totally get it. Like I totally get why people are fascinated with it, you know, in the same way I would want to know about Sex in the City or sure. a show that I grew up like just being like, oh my God, I love this. I want to know about it. It doesn't, it's it's not a negative, you know, and I always sort of viewed it as a negative. Um, speaking of a negative, I wanted to ask you about this. Um, I had Jenny Garth on my other podcast, and I, you know, at some point you do become you go from guest star to series regular. Yeah. And obviously, I don't feel this way, but <laughs> she said she didn't get it. She didn't get the Claire thing. Um, what do you, what do you feel about? <laughs> Now, for me, I mean, obviously, the Claire thing was, it was so much, it was different than everything else that was being presented on that show yeah. for, for so long, you know, and just obviously, you're so beautiful, and you bring something very special to that role of Claire Arnold. What do you think about the, her comment? Of course, she didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, of course, yeah. she of course she didn't like, I mean, Kelly and Claire couldn't be more different. So yeah. that was the point. I think that was the point. Totally. I, I'm I with think, you. Yeah. I mean, I think that was, that was the, that was why Claire became a series regular because she was like totally out of the box. Yeah. And absolutely. She was so different than all the other girls. Well, you, this thing so, starts. So it doesn't surprise me. I mean, like, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's also, you know, in fairness to Jenny, maybe, you know, in that being in that bubble of 90210 and being, you know, constantly bombarded as a lead actress, uh, you know, with stuff and what's going on in, in her every day, whether she's got to do some talk show or some stuff, maybe it's hard for her to connect with other females at, at that time. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely like, I, you know, again, I've, I've said this before, like Tori was very welcoming. Um, Shannon was kind of on her way out. So it wasn't like I really had a ton of interaction with her. Um, Gabrielle was very, very welcoming, very friendly. Tiffany was kind of also new. So she was sort of navigating stuff. 
Um, Jenny, yeah, Jenny was tough. I mean, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's, I'm not, I don't think I'm revealing anything new. I think that's just, I think she would be the first to admit that, you know, I mean, she did after years of me being on the show, she did say to me, I'm really sorry, you know, that I basically haven't spoken to you in three years. Um, mm. I'm really, I'm, I'm hard on new people and well, that's a long time to be pretty hard on somebody. Yeah. But we, I mean, like, I think that it, I think it, I think it, I think it is also like a weird thing when you're, um, yeah, it, I, yeah, I can understand how you would feel maybe like this is your thing and anybody new coming into the equation makes you feel maybe like you want to make sure the focus stays on your storyline and your character. And, and it always did. I mean, Claire was always a peripheral character. I mean, like I was always sort of on the sidelines doing weird stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Sorry. Beautiful. You even sneeze um, beautifully. What do you mean? You even sneeze beautifully. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, you're, you're, you're welcome. Um, I, <laughs> um, back to 90210, you become a series yeah. regular. How do you, what is your, speaking from an acting perspective, what is your thought on how you develop Claire? I mean, were you even doing anything like that? I mean, you told me on the last thing that we did, you know, you, you are Claire, which is one of the reasons why I, we've all fallen in love with you is what I what I've said but are you finding a different version of yourself what is that process like for you at that time um I think she was very like her energy and the way she dressed and moved and yeah like it, it's very it's it's very me um Again, which is, I think, partly why, why I sort of transitioned and became, you know, a regular on the show. Because I think they just were kind of like, oh, this is like a totally different energy, totally different than the other women on the show. Um, so I think that a lot of it was me. I mean, I was always pushing the agenda with like the clothes and the hair and like, you know, because again, like as an actor, I didn't get a ton to do. I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't Jenny and I wasn't Tori. And so it was always a bit like, I didn't have a lot to do. So, you know, I would get a script and I'd be like, oh, I have like four scenes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm bored. Right. So I'm going to focus on like, what can I like, I'm going to get into like the wardrobe and I'm going to get into like, you know, like it, it was a way I think for me to sort of like, and now, obviously, as you know, you know, I'm writing and producing and so, like, I'm not a person that likes to just sit idle and just kind of be like, oh, great. I have days off. I'm going to go to the beach or I'm going to go, I'm going to go get a manicure and a pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not really that, I'm not really that person. So I would always be like, oh my God, I'm only working two days this week. Okay. So what the hell am I going to do with my other days? And so I think like, I sort of threw myself into kind of silly, silly things that sure made me feel like I was adding value, you know, like creating like a cool look for her and really pushing the envelope with like that kind of stuff, just because it was sort of, you know, I couldn't really get in there and be like working on the scripts. I couldn't mm -hmm. really have a ton of influence, but that was like one area where I felt like I could kind of at least feel like I was doing something, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I want to ask you which about, why, like, which is why like Claire went from being like, you know, what she was at the beginning to by the end, like, just like, I mean, looked like from a Vivian Westwood, like <laughs> runway show, like with all the crazy shit. There's some like, episodes. just like, fuck it. I'm just going to have fun. You know, there are some episodes where Claire changes her look like three times in the episode. Yeah. And that was all, that was totally me. Like, I yeah. was like, oh, I think I need to have like a fur vest here. I'm like, let's go that. get this helmet Lang. Like I was always getting Molly, the costume designer. Like I would always be like taking her to Maxfields and like trying to get really avant-garde, like Jean Colonna and, you know, weird stuff to just be like, just to, like, give me something to do. Cause I was just kind of, you know, again, I 
didn't have much to do. And, you know, like I talked to Larry Mullen and he said that they loved giving Claire things. They loved giving her lines that they couldn't write for other other people, because you, as you started developing that, they said, I want to give, you know, oh, Claire can say this. And Chip Johansson, who was a, a writer as well, they just loved giving you lines. So it was it was like this perfect combination of you bringing this energy, them finding you, you being a really talented actor and performer. And then this is how it sort of uh, becomes a thing. Now, I do have a question if um, at, you you do have an inner Claire right that still exists inside you so for you can sure. you can speak to to what she may or may not have done in in her life if there was like a, a guy that well it's okay he's a podcaster now but so back then he was like he worked at the radio station at the college and he asked you out <laughs> <laughs> he, asked you, he, he asked claire out to go i don't know to the after dark or something like that do you think totally. claire would have totally it just depends what kind of music he was into Okay, it's like the stones. If he, had good, that, yeah. if he had good taste in music and, you know, dressed cute and had like a good vibe, maybe, yeah. Okay, okay. I like, <laughs> I like that. All right. Um, all right, wait. So moving out of 90210. Oh, I wanted to ask yes. you, what was that? Oh wait, what was, wait, was that like in this the 90s? Supposed, this is supposed to be about guest star, not 90210. It is. I want to ask you one thing Peter. about it. <laughs> wait, hold up, hold up. Just, this is good. This is a good one. What okay. was the 90s like working in as an actor in the 90s? I know you spent a lot of time hanging out with Tori and I talked to somebody who said that, that the group of you all, and I don't know if you were in the group of you all, but they were all hanging out with each other. They were all aware of each other and they like, were- who's the group of you all? Well, like, I mean, Brian was friends with uh, this girl, Monica Lacey and mm -hmm. Leo and all this whole group that went and got soda together and, and all this stuff as young kids. But that group sort of expanded. And I'm sure Tori had a group, you know what I mean, that yeah. she hung out with. So you came, you know, the, uh, we are talking about the 90s a lot today. I don't know if you know that, Kathleen, like people are talking about the 90s a lot. Yeah, no, yeah. it's like so big right now. It, re it really is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what, but <laughs> what, what was the nineties like hanging out with Tori and being around her family and her friends and all that? She, I mean, she was, we were fast friends. Uh, I loved her. I loved her brother, Randy, her mother and father were super welcoming to me. I was, you know, Canadian. So I didn't celebrate American Thanksgiving every year. They would invite me to Thanksgiving dinner at their house um what's that is there a turkey oh yeah okay just want to make sure <laughs> oh yeah it was legit mm -hmm. it was legit yeah it was it's a real deal so you but you had fun in the 90s you didn't did you have that experience of um what people talk about well I mean I think obviously the most the most <laughs> the craziest difference is just that you know there was no social media and there was no I mean the things that we used to do and the life that we lived I mean nobody could no one found us no one saw us and no one really knows about it so it's no. it, yeah thankfully no it yeah. was very um it was very kind of like yeah I mean there there's things and nights that I think of where I'm like oh my god can you imagine if mm. it was 2021 and oh. what that would be now you know like it was it was very different and and it was very um it was fun I mean it was super fun it was super fun you leave 90210 I've talked you know I've hung out with Brian a bunch and he's told me that after he he did the show for 10 years and he thought once he left 90210 the, these doors are going to be flying open for him that he's going to be able to work anywhere on any show on any movie he just came up a 10 year and of course he doesn't he did not have that experience of course he's doing great now and he's and and yeah. all of them are coming around now but um what was that like after you left did you have the similar experience or yeah I mean I think that was that was definitely why I left I was terrified and very hypersensitive to it and very hyper aware of I I, I feel like I I knew, I knew that it was going to be, oh my God, like, you know, it was, again, it was different. Like being on TV at that time was kind of like, not cool. Mm. Um, you didn't really want to be a TV actor. You wanted to be a film actor. I mean, it's, it's so different now. Sure. And at the time, like, I remember being like, oh my God, I have to, I have to get off of the show because if I don't, like, I'm never going to work again. I'm going to be, I'm going to be screwed. 
And I remember my, I was, I was with William Morris at the time. And I remember like my agents at William Morris were like, we need to get you off of this show because like, it's going to fuck you. Like, you're never going to be able to like do anything after this. And I would get, you know, every hiatus, I would get offered these like horrible TV movies. And it would be like, you know, the disease of the week, lifetime movies and stuff. And, you know, I always consistently was just like, no, 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 I can't do it because that that's going to just be what it's going to be. And when it kind of came to the point for me leaving, I did, I had done, you know, I knew sort of my sensibility and where, where I wanted to go. And I did this movie called Nowhere, which was Gregoraki. And um, it was a, it, you know, we movie premiered at Sundance. And it was very, very much like the polar opposite of mm-hmm. 90210. You know, it was like 90210 on acid or something like that. And um, at the time, like, it was definitely like a very calculated, strong choice for me. Like, I was basically like, I'm not this, I'm this. And I did that movie and I left the show and I just made a really, really, really strong choice to kind of be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to go for this. I'm going to see what happens. And um, I, there was this acting teacher, Larry Moss, who I had read about and heard about, and I had never had acting lessons in my life. I'd been working my whole life and never had an acting class. So I went and enrolled with him and I just started like taking classes and I started basically just being like, I'm only going to do stuff that really feels representative of who I am artistically. And it was a total uphill battle. I mean, it was a total uphill battle, but you know, luckily I was able to sort of get those movies and get those jobs and get seen by the right people. And, you know, I slowly started doing kind of, you know, the movies like XXXY with Mark Ruffalo and Malt Cop. I am Sam, Sean Penn, even though it's a small yeah. role, it all of a sudden was like, oh, she's in a movie with Sean Penn. Oh, that's, that doesn't really make me think of Nana 210. So therefore it became like, oh, she's doing that. That's. It, it, be, it becomes, I'm, this is Kathleen Robertson and not Clara from 90210. And I don't know that anybody else, there's, it's very difficult to do what you did. So it, it, was very, it was very difficult for sure. So your law and order, you do a law and order. You say and law and order weird. I, I'm, I'm saying it weird. Say it, say it, <laughs> say it. Let me hear you say your, it. <laughs> your law and order. Why am I saying that weird? You're going law and order, like you have a dialect. Order. Or, is it your jersey? Is it, it, might, like my, jersey my, <laughs> it might be my jersey thing. Your law and order. There you go. Your law, law and, and order. order. I gotta, I gotta do, I gotta get, I gotta get more Canadian when I, when I say things. So you understand my, my language. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like, so you, your dialect's really coming out. Oh, that's law, just law and order. Thank Thank you, Kathleen. Yes. <laughs> In your law and order. Hey, did you just get a little bit bitchy with me? No, <laughs> no, I was not bitchy. That was just, okay, being, okay, okay, okay. I was being silly. Okay. Okay. Uh, your law and order is a, yes very controversial law and order. And I don't it know if was. people were, are aware of this. Um, you did a, you, your, your episode is the criminal intent law and order. And I keep <laughs> my, 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 my natural self wants to keep saying or. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Vincent D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio. Yeah, well, some, I have a friend who's has that last name too. And he gets very offended if I say D'Onofrio. Oh, D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio. Yeah. Yeah, you have to really, you really have to, you, you're, you're now. Okay. He has a exhaustion meltdown on set while you're a guest star. Welcome to the world of being a guest star, Kathleen Robertson. And you, you, you know, you come from 90210, you were a series regular, you talked about, the, you know, eventually when you're a series lead, you know, wanting to be good with all the, um, all the other guest stars and all that stuff what was this law and order experience like for you this had to be in, an insane period yeah it was a nightmare it was it was it was it was it was insane um so alex chapel who directed me in a film that i did called torso mm. is a big dick wolf guy he is like i love the- your look in torso by the way i don't know if you know oh. that Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm you like really. Red, you like the red lips. 
I'm really into it. Alex Chappell directed Torso and he's a big dick wolf, wolf guy, does all the Lone Wars, whatever. So he, um, he asked me to do this episode. He was like, oh, I'm doing Law and Order. He does a ton of Law and Orders. And he was like, I'm doing this Law and Order. It shoots in New York. Um, it's like you and Adam Goldberg. It's a really fun role. Like, will you do it? And I was like, yeah, I'll totally do it. I love Alex. Love to work with Alex. Love, always love working in New York. So went to New York to do this guest star role, which was, you know, uh, maybe seven days of work, eight days of work, something like that. Um, and I was literally supposed to be in and out in a week and it turned into about a month and a half. What? <laughs> um, because yeah, again, and I, I feel a little weird talking about it because it's obviously personal sensitive stuff that went on. Um, but it obviously was public knowledge. It's so public, again, yeah. And you're, you're if, you not... speak, if you speak about it, I don't feel as uncomfortable talking about it. It's a, it's um, a, it's public. I mean, he 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 was, you know, he was exhausted. He was going through stress. I mean, this is what the article the article says. So, I mean, you yeah. have more insight. I mean, I think he gets into yeah, it with like a produ should... producer. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> doesn't he get into it with the producer? Yeah, I mean, there was a. It was really a bad time. It, it couldn't have been a worse time for me to come on the show. Um, and Alex, the director was kind of like, oh no, I'm so sorry because I, and like, I was getting, I was supposed to get married, uh, November 27th in Palm Springs. And I was like, I need to leave. Like, I can't sit around yeah. in New York for this month. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was just very, it was like one of those things where I was just like, I can't, I can't believe this is happening during my little guest star stint. And so it was like, it just kept going on and on and on. And it was like, didn't he, didn't he push a producer through the wall? I mean, I just true or false. I I I don't know. Like I can't. you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I've read that that happened somewhere. Well, it was uh, pretty. Um, it was just a. It was a dark period for him, and I, it was sure. awful. You know, it was awful for sure. And um, yeah, and and so it just kept getting we need to hold you for another week. We need to hold you for another week. And I was like, what is going on? Like, you know, because, and they wouldn't let me leave because any day he could come back to work and then we would be back working again. So every day was kind of like, is he coming back? Is he not coming back? Is he right. coming back? Is he not coming back? So it ended up being literally like just the guest star stamp that wouldn't end. That is insane. What an intense situation. I'm, yeah. I mean, um, and was he, was he fine with you? Like, when he did the scenes and all that you did a lot of stuff with him you did he a bunch was, he was intense i mean again if i'm being really honest like it it, it wasn't of it, it was a really challenging set to be on it it wasn't fun um mm. he was very um new york italian <laughs> no he was just clearly going through so much stuff that had nothing to do with the show. Yeah. You know, and, like, that, and that happens. It happens. Like, a but lot I feel of like you're, people and you're like, you have to know as a guest star that you're just there to do your, your thing and get out because like, it's not, there's so much stuff going on. And when you're on a set and you're a series regular and you're, there's just like so much drama and stuff that you as a guest star just don't know anything about. So I was just always kind of like, I'm just going to go to work. I'm going to do my job. And I'm going to go home. And I mean, well, you were on 90210. So there was a lot of that too behind the scenes. So it seems like you would have yeah. some experience of, you know, learning the, the, the politics and drama, politics and drama of a, of. For sure. Yeah. All right. You do a medium with Patricia Arquette. Do you remember doing that? I do actually. Um, I was like a huge fan of hers and I, my sisters and my mom, Medium was their favorite show. Amazing. And so I was a little bit like, again, like I haven't done a ton of guest star stuff. And I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it. Cause no, again, knowing that it's diff, it's not, it's usually not a fun experience, an easy, fun experience. Being a guest star is very stressful. 
So I was a bit like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. And also the role kind of was a bit sexual and I had to be kind of mm. wearing like skimpy clothes. <laughs> like, I know, I, I know. This like, is my one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite. I, I, was a bit, I was a bit like, I don't know if I want to do this. And my mom, of course, and my sisters were like, you have to do it. It's our favorite show. And so I kind of did it for my family, which, you know, was, which is valid. Sure. Um, but she was awesome. Like, I remember my experience with her was super cool. She was just exactly what you would hope for and expect. And she was a total pro and smart and cool. And, you know, I asked her a million questions about all of her cool, amazing movies and roles and things that she had done. And she was awesome. So she was, she was welcoming to the experience. I mean, you're, you're, cool. you're in this like cool. really skimpy bikini to start things off. Do you remember this? It's like this yes, tur like, turquoise blue. Yes, yeah. I, I I remember. Yeah, no, I was yeah not. It's so you had to like ride a bike at some point too, and then she has like she you're on the videotape, you and this guy, and you you plot to murder your husband in this in this uh, <laughs> in this episode. It's it's a pretty good thing. I'm really I really dug it. I thought it was a really good medium. I haven't seen much of that, but it's uh, it was it was cool to to check out. <laughs> You do a you do a CSI. Do, what was that? That also you're a bank robber in CSI. I don't know if you remember this. <laughs> am I right in saying? Um, am I right in saying in CSI I was a like had to dress up like a guy? Yes, yes. It freaked oh, me the fuck out. That's weird. Yeah, that's weird. I yeah. I kind of vaguely remember that. Also, uh, also just being like one of those things where. I just was like, oh my God, it's just so hard to be a star. Uh, all right. So now you do, you do um, boss. Yeah. So a lot of, a bunch of guest starring stuff, some indie films, and then you get boss. Talk about uh, skimpy and uh, <laughs> steamy. Yeah. Kitty, Kitty becomes, uh, Clara becomes something replaced in my brain with, <laughs> with Kitty for so many different reasons. Talk to me about getting that show. Yeah, that was a, I mean, that was a total game changer for me on every level. Um, it was kind of the role that I'd been waiting for my entire career, you know, um, working with Gus Van Sant and, um, you know, having the opportunity to just do such incredible material and to play a role that was so complicated and layered and contradictory and, you um, it's, it was also a funny thing for me because I'd always like spent my entire career saying I would never do nudity. And I had turned down so many big jobs because of it. I was, um, I was supposed to do wild things with mm. Neville Campbell. Did you know that? Did I ever tell I you did, that? I do know that you told me that. Yeah. Yeah, I told mm -hmm. that. yeah, I was supposed to do wild things. And I also was, um, I wish I knew you then. I would have I said, you I was should also do this. like, I yeah, do this. I, yeah, <laughs> no, I know. And I was also, um, the other kind of job for me, the nudity became like the thing I just was like, I won't do it was secretary. The one that Maggie Gyllenhaal did oh. which, to my day, the biggest. Mm. Regret I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. You should have done that one. Yeah. I know. I know. Um, but I was really like, um, I was really, I just, I always just felt like I'll never do nudity. I don't, I, I just, I'm not comfortable with it. And it just felt like politically something that I was like, I just won't do it. And then I, you know, and that was more in my twenties, I would say like most of the stuff that kind of, I would turn down based on sexuality or nudity was in my twenties. And then, you know, cut to, I'm like 34. Or I've had a baby and I got offered a job where it's like, oh, you need to be naked. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do Sign it. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. I mean, I read it and I just went, holy shit, this role is so great. Mm -hmm. You know, Gus is probably my favorite independent filmmaker of all time. Um, and for Hod Safinia, the writer showrunner is brilliant. And I just kind of, it was just like where I was at, at my life in that moment. I just kind of went, oh yeah, this character is, the sexuality and the nudity is not exploitive. It's completely important for her. Like it's who she is. It's yeah. 
her sexuality is like how she defines herself. It's how she feels alive. So I'm either going to do this and I'm really going to do it or I'm not going to do it. And I was like, I'm going to do it. And so I did it. I love it. I love all of that. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> it was, it was, it was very challenging. I bet. I mean, what is that like to, to do scenes like that? Super hard. I mean, super, super hard. And, um, you know, I feel like the only way as an actor you can kind of get your head around it is to just fully immerse yourself in like, it's not, it's not me, it's her. It's not, you know, it's just, you just have to almost trick your brain to just be like fully immersed in the material. And if the material's good, which thankfully it was, then, then it's easier to do, you know, I'm sure if you were doing blown away, Mm -hmm. um it would be very tricky to do that but if you're doing something like boss where the writing is so beautiful and so nuanced and so complicated that you can just sort of be like oh yeah like it's irrelevant that I'm naked right now because I'm fully immersed in like what my agenda is and what I want and who I'm going for and what I'm going for politically and you know from a power perspective and so um her sexuality was very much like a weapon and mm. that helped me yeah. I mean, it's great stuff. I mean, it's it's some of the best work that you've ever done. So, I mean, yeah, it's great. Sure. And, you know, you right now you're writing and you're you're producing and you've kind of you're you're you are obviously still acting. You've done you did Bates Motel, Fixer, Murder in the First, Northern Rescue, you did so many other things. But and and just now you did The Expanse, which we could talk about in a second, but you're writing and producing December a lot. 10th, Amazon. I can't wait for that. I'm, I'm stoked. My little plug. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah. talk to me about being a writer and producer now and what experiences as an act, like has your acting experience sort of affect how you write things in any way? Sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I always, um, everything I do as a writer is, is all character. It's all about character. That's kind of all I'm really interested in. Um, and so, yeah, I'm always kind of like, how do I write something and how do I make this scene something that two actors are going to be excited about? If I have to write a scene that's a bunch of an exposition, how do I figure out a way to do it in a way where it's like, oh, the actors are going to go, oh, this is really fun for me to do. It gives me something to do as opposed to just sitting at a desk, you know? So everything for sure is informed by being an actor. It's, it's first and foremost, like what I'm most interested in and will always be most interested in. Um, and it's kind of where I've had, uh, success as a writer. I think that, you know, whether it's writing for Julia Roberts or, you know, the movie I'm, I'm writing a big movie for Paramount right now. That's, um, fingers crossed, like, uh, I can't really say, I can't really say actually, that's okay. I won't yeah. say who it is, but, um, anyway, uh, I'm, you know, definitely writing and developing stuff for, for really fantastic women fantastic actors and um that's my strength for sure and that's where i've found that i've had the most success that's awesome i mean it's great to see you doing all stuff you're still acting you've got the expanse coming out how did this come up um and you know tell me about this show about the expanse yeah yeah yes the expanse <laughs> expanse <laughs> Um, I just got offered it. It just kind of dropped in my lap. I just got a call and my agent was like, do you want to do the expanse season six? It's the final season. It's Amazon. I knew the show. I thought the show was super cool. Um, but it's different. You like, you haven't really done much sci-fi in your, no, I've never done sci-fi. I've never done sci oh, Actually. I mean, Tin Man, the Zoe. It's sci-fi. I yeah. guess technically sci-fi. I mean, we went to Comic-Con for it, but it didn't really feel like sci-fi to me. Can't imagine um, you at Comic-Con. I would oh my love God, to- it was a nightmare. <laughs> I can't even, I would just love to have been a fly on the wall to see you at Comic-Con. I had all... to do, for Tin Man at Comic-Con too, they made me read The Wizard of Oz to a bunch of like- Oh my God. Fanboys. Yeah, well, I, I should have been there. If only it, I had known. <laughs> it was, it was something. I mean, my God, it was yeah. something. I yeah. could just imagine. And weirdly, and weirdly, Bates Motel was at Comic Con too. Which oh, I make that makes sense. I get that. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. so those are my only kind of sci-fi ish things. But yeah, no, it just kind of came my way, and I again, like, I 
have been so focused on writing and show running. Um, I just finished show running my first thing, which will premiere early 2022 on Roku, which is called Swimming with Sharks. I can't wait for this. You've been working on this nonstop. I mean, yeah, like, I know this, so, I'm talking yeah, to you. The, yeah. It was like a COVID nightmare project in terms of- Tell me about that real quick too. You know, you shot some of this during COVID. You shot like- a good, Yeah, we got uh, shut down. So we got shut down. Um, on that Thursday, the 13th, that everybody got shut down. Was it March? Yeah. Yep. Um, and we were mid, you know, midstream. So it was like my first show as a showrunner and COVID hit. And then we shut down. And, you know, I remember we made an announcement to the crew. We're going to shut down for two weeks and we're going to be back and we're going to finish. And then it was literally like a year later that we went back and thank God we were able to go back and finish it. Um, but it was for Quibi. Totally uh, something different at the time, which is no longer a thing. Yeah, it was for Quibi. And then when we literally, I mean, I was sitting at the monitor with my producer on like the last scene and my phone went off and I looked at it and it was like the deadline announcement that Quibi had gone bankrupt. Were you like, what, what am I doing? No, I just literally was like, how does that affect what I'm doing right now? To go right now to Marino's and have lunch. And I need a glass of wine. Yes. Because <laughs> what is happening? Like what the, like it was insanity. I can just imagine. Yeah. So then, you know, luckily knock on wood, like Lionsgate, who's the studio were fabulous. And I begged and pleaded and was like, please let me do this as a 30 minute, like these Quibi 10 minute Quibi episodes are going to be of no value anywhere. And it's just going to be mm. just going to end up in a dumpster somewhere. Please let me like this show is, you know, yeah. I, I believe in it so much. And um, so we went back and we sold it to Roku and we edited as six 30 minute episodes and it's going to premiere, uh, probably like first quarter of 2022. We're still waiting on the actual date, but I that's will awesome. That's... I will definitely let you know, so you can spread the word. You know, I will. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. really cool. It's like Kiernan Shipka and Diane Kruger and Donald Sutherland. And, um, it's a thriller. It's sort of like talented Mr. Ripley with two women. It's really cool. I can't wait. I, I can't wait to see it. I know it's going to be incredible. Um, we're at the end of our rope here, but I wanted to say, um, here's what I learned. You, it's possible Claire would have gone out with me or, or a, a guy that worked at a radio station. <laughs> That's one of the things that I, I took away uh, here today. That was so. your takeaway? I mean, I learned a lot about being a guest star and I learned about your stuff, but that was the one big uh, takeaway for me is that there is a possibility in an alternate universe somewhere that this character goes out with, with, uh, with. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me ask you this. You know, though. Melanie's going to see this and make fun of you. Totally. Oh, always. Yes, they all do. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, Larry. Of course. Yeah. Let me ask you this, looking back at some of the work that you've done as a guest star or um, when you've had people, you know, when you've been the lead and had other guest stars come on, what is your, what is it that I think most people would not know or what, what about the experience makes it so challenging? I was talking to somebody and they said that sometimes the guest stars get the meteors, the meatiest parts because yeah. they're going to kill them off. They're going to, you know, yeah. she's the one with the illness, whatever, like. It's because, you know, they, they can't do that to a lead character. Yeah. But um, does that make it all the more challenging? How challenging is it, I guess, is what I'm asking you to be a guest star? It's super challenging. And you're you're totally right. Like the problem, the issue with it also from a casting perspective is like when we were cast, you know, when I was trying to find actors to play roles for sharks, it's like you need somebody who's like A-list, incredible, amazing actor but those actors are usually booked on other shows. So it's very hard to find, like you're looking for sort of this very difficult thing, which is you're looking for someone who's incredibly good and incredibly solid, but that's willing to come and do a guest star role. It's, it's hard. Yeah. Um, and I know casting directors always joke and say, oh, it's the hardest role. The guest star roles are the hardest because they can make or break an episode. Like if you don't have somebody that's really good, the episode's kind of, the episode doesn't work and it falls flat and you have all these great actors that are used to doing their thing. And then you bring in someone to play whatever the, 
patient of the week or the, you know, guy that's killed someone for that week. And it's like, he has these big monologues. Well, if he doesn't deliver, it's like your, the episode doesn't work. It's interesting. It's interesting, it's interesting that you say that because I've, I've been doing the 90210 podcast. Like there are, there have been times where those guys have written this person and I'm not going to say who, but like this character could become a lead. She could become a series regular. Right. And the, and then the actor comes in does not deliver what they wanted out of it. And then yeah. that whole idea of this character now becoming a lead, it gets shifted and changed. And so, and it's challenging for the actor because she probably doesn't really know, or he doesn't know that that's even a possibility or what they can bring more of to, you know, further their career by getting cast as a series regular. So it's a challenging spot to be in, I would imagine. For sure. And you definitely never know, right? I mean, you you definitely never know. Like there is always that off. I mean, look what happened to me on 90210. Like there is always that thing of like, oh, if I do a really good job, maybe they'll keep me. Right. Well, obviously you've been doing a really good job and um, I just think the world of you and thank you for being the first guest here on Guest Star. I thought that was appropriate. Um, you know how I feel about you and uh, you'll always be my TV crush. So it's uh, it was cool talking to you about some of this. It was nice talking to you too, Peter. Well, um, the expanse is I got all flustered there. The expanse is coming out December tenth. We want everybody to check it out, right? Amazon, yep. Amazon Prime. Okay. Well, thank you, Kathleen. This has been amazing. Thank you. I like your beanie. It's cute. Well, that was Kathleen Robertson, and that was absolutely so much fun. I think that's an understatement. Um, next week, I'm going to be joined by Monica Lacey, one of the triplets that was. Uh, in so many things through the 90s and today. And uh, we're going to get to all of it next week on 